All right, so let's go ahead and I got the Sting webinar here, okay? So this right here is just the basic logo that we had. So let's say, for example, a, uh, a team or a school or something um, went and gave you just this text right here. And I think they actually had the word Sarasota above it on the initial one and then baseball below it. So what they wanted is something a little bit different. So what I did is I used some of the envelope features and envelope tools, and I, and I really wanted to take advantage of customizing for the team as well. So I wanted to do, because when you're doing heat transfer vinyl, for example, with a design like this, and you're not screen printing it, that's where no matter what, you're going to have to obviously weed all the material and cut it and press it and everything else. So what I always recommend to all of you out there, if, if you're not screen printing it or you're not outsourcing it to be screen printed, is customize it. I mean, what's it going to take you an extra 20 seconds to weed out the custom name Vasalo on the back? It's not going to add a lot of actual material. It's going to add, what, 1.7 inches by 9 inches wide. So it's not going to add a lot of extra material, but you can upsell and, and charge a lot more for those shirts now. Because had I just done the word Sting Baseball like this and gone in and did it, what would have happened is they would have said, well, that's way too expensive. I can just get it screen printed for this price. Does that make sense? So if you're cutting something out and you're having to cut it anyway, make sure to customize and it's going to add a lot to it. So what I told them is, hey, what we can do is we can do a sting baseball like this. We can throw a little custom number 20 on the front of the shirt right there, kind of down to the side. And that's why I arced it a little to have the baseball underneath, custom number 20. And then, of course, we did the custom names on the back because, again, that's not going to add a lot of material either. Okay, so. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you kind of what I did. So they sent me a vector design like this right here. Okay. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. Now, how many of you out there? Give me a give me a quick poll right there. When a a school you talk to a school and they want you to do a uniform or something for them, do they normally send you a PDF or a vector design, or do they normally just send you kind of a pixelated uh, JPEG or PNG? So give me percent, like 75% of the time they send you a vector. Give me the percent on what they send you on a vector. 100% of the time they send you a vector, 20% of the time. Okay, complete ranges. I see some 0%, I see some 80%, 25s, 50%, 100% JPEG. Okay, good. And that's what I figured because everything's always going to be a little bit different. So what I would do with this design right here, let's just say, for example, and this one's a little bit more basic, but that's fine. Let's just say, for example, they only sent me a JPEG of this design. OK, so if I took this design here and let me move it down here and I'm going to come up to bitmaps and convert this to a bitmap and let's do 100 DPI. So I just converted this to a bitmap. It's not a vector anymore, okay? So I did the opposite of what we want, obviously. I went from a vector to a bitmap. Now what I need to do is I need to get this design created, okay, into a vector. So who knows how I would create this into a vector? I know most of you know. What would I use to create this into a vector? Now, we could definitely do a trace. Now, see the pixelation on this? Let's see what a trace is going to do for us. So I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to click. I'm going to do a trace bitmap, and let's just do a logo trace. So logo trace going through that actually looks pretty good. I can increase my detail on it a little bit or decrease my detail a little bit. So a lot of different things you can do with it. I can, what I'm really paying attention to in this design right here and the way that I can see that it's laid out is I'm paying attention to the orange and I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete my original image. I'm going to remove the background. Now, if I want to, I can go to colors here 
And let's say that black right there, I don't want. I can click on the black and delete that. See how that deleted the black out of there? So you can go in and get rid of other colors. How many of you out there, there's a lot of times where you'll trace a design and it will show a bunch of different shades of black. Well, if it did that, you can click on those multiple colors and merge them together into one color. So those are a lot of different features in the power trace that are pretty powerful features for you to do. So you definitely want to use these and go in and click on how many of you knew this colors was here. A lot of you probably that haven't done a power trace um, as much didn't even know that that color section was there. So that color section is a very powerful feature, and you can sort colors by similarity. You can sort by frequency. It'll give you the number of colors that are in the design. So again, these are all Corel Draw features that a lot of you may not know about, but are going to save you a ton of time. Okay? So I got my sting there. I'm going to hit OK. So this is what it gave me here. So that was just a bitmap design. And now I just converted it into a vector design. Now here's the only thing that you run into sometimes. If I come over here and let's just, I clicked and welded it together and then I double click, you're gonna see some different areas. See how that's rounded right there? See how this is rounded and it's a little bit curved right here? Go to different areas. Those look pretty sharp there. This is kind of rounded a little bit there. So I could get away with this and I could do something like this. Watch, I'm going to go here. I'm going to come over to my place and fill. I'm going to go one island to the outside. I don't need to add stones. And let's just start with point one just to see what that does for us. I'm going to do an island fill. Now see what that did for me? That gave me, obviously, my island fill. Now the island fill was probably a little bit too much there. So I'm going to control Z and go back. And let's try like a 0 0.07. That one looks a little bit better. So I did a 0 0.07 island fill. And then on the second one, I'm going to do it a little bit thicker. Let's maybe try that 0.1 island fill. Okay. So you can see what we have there. Let's turn this outline to a black. Highlight it. Right click on my X. And we've basically recreated that logo. There's my orange. There's my white. And I'll show you the white there in the gray. And there's my black. All right. Can everybody still hear me? I see that Jewel can't hear me anymore. Everybody can still hear me? Okay. Perfect. Now, me, honestly, I look at this design and I'm not good with it because I don't like the way that this corner went. I don't like the way that this corner is rounding and everything else. So the S didn't turn out bad. But again, this area right here doesn't look great to me. So what I would do is instead of even using the power trace, power trace is a great feature. You can still use it on a lot of different things. I would take my bitmap design here. First thing I always do whenever I'm going to use any tools is I lock it. And the reason why I lock it is watch if I have this unlocked. Let me unlock it. See how I can move it around. So if I'm using my tools and I click, it's going to keep moving my design everywhere. So I just lock my design down. Now it can't be moved. And then I would come in here and use, you can use any different type of tool. If I used my B spline tool, I'm going to hit V. That, remember what V is going to do? That's going to make it so it's basically an anchor. It's not going to move around. If you hold shift, it's going to draw a straight line. So click, come over here, click, come over here, click. And all I got to do is move my mouse in different areas and it's going to move around with it. Click. I'm holding shift. So every time I click on a corner, hold shift, click, click, click. Now, of course, this is going to take me, I don't know, two or three minutes to do, maybe five minutes to do if you're, if you're just doing it either way. But now... Look at the difference of this S. Oh, I deleted the other one. But how sharp this S right here is. Can you guys see the difference of the corners and everything there? That's where I always tell you, spending a little bit of extra time on your design 
is going to make it look a whole lot nicer, okay? So then I can come to my T here and I'll do the same thing. I hold the V, that's gonna start my anchor. So V, I'm holding shift to there, shift down, shift over. I don't hold shift when it goes in an angle, only when it goes at a straight line. I'm holding V the entire time. Boom and boom, okay? So there's my T. Yes, the V in is a very, because I used to do this all the time, Ann, is how many of you, when you would use the B-spline tool and you want it to be a sharp turn, you would try and click and make like three nodes right in a row right there, and then it would look like that. I used to do it all the time as well. The V is going to give you that perfect shift and V together is what I'm doing. Yes, Kate. Okay, so there's my T. And then I can come over here. Now I could use my envelope tool to do this, but why not just stick with what I've been doing. I'm going to use my V and my B spline tool. Come down to there, come over to there, holding shift, not holding shift, and that's good there. Holding V, holding shift and V, just V, just V, shift and V, just V, shift and V. Just V, just V, shift and V, just V. And there's my N. And I'm saying the letter V, yes. Yes, Felicia, V as in Victor. So V, shift and V to get to this one. Just V, shift and V, just V, shift and V. A little bit of the angle, so just V, shift and V, just V. Shift and V, just V, shift and V, just V, shift and V, just V, just V, just V. Okay, so we're done. Um, angles, yes, you can do angles with shift and V, but it hits specific angles, Kate. So, for example, if I did a V here and then I held shift, see how it pops to different angles perfectly? But if the design you're working with doesn't have that perfect angle and you want to be able to adjust it in smaller portions, then you can use just the V and then double click. All right. So now I'm going to grab all of these. Boom, boom, boom. I just held shift and I'm going to fill that in orange and right click. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit weld. To weld that together now see the difference in the sharpness of this design so watch what I can do now now I'm gonna go place and fill I'm gonna go what do we do I think we did 0 0.07 for an island fill and then 0 0.1 for an island fill and I want to go a little bit more because you can see I made the design a little bit bigger here so let's go 0.1 and 0.1. Now see that right there? I'm going to show you how we can edit those. But we definitely want this area to connect because in their design, that's connecting as well. So that's where you can adjust your width of your contour spacing. And that's what's going to make that difference. Okay. So I'm going to go here to my black. Now I'm going to get rid of those blue outlines just by right clicking on the X here. And I saw a couple different areas. I See that area? Let's just delete those two nodes right there. Make sure that's perfectly straight. This area right here, just delete those nodes. That's perfectly straight. Boom, perfect straight, and boom, perfect straight. Okay, everybody see what I did there? There were just a couple nodes the way that the, all of those were forming. So I just deleted those nodes to make it straight going through it. So there is our design now, and now we basically recreated this JPEG here into a perfect vector. Okay, so now we have our orange, we have our white and alternate gray, So you, just so you can see the difference. Boom. We have our orange, we have our gray, and we have our black. All right, everybody see how I did that part? Now, now that we created their original logo, I want to show you how I did this part of the design. Um, how to delete the nodes again. Yeah, nodes are very easy to delete. So see this right here? I missed a little spot right there, Karen. So if I double clicked it, see this node right there? If I just double click on that node, it'll delete it and see how it straightened it out. Or I could have highlighted it and hit delete. 
So either double click on the actual node and that deletes it or highlight it, okay? So now this is pretty cool here. So a lot of you may not know this, but how many of us out there use our magic envelope tool? Hopefully most of you, most of you are using the magic envelope. Yes, yes, okay, I see a lot of you are, a lot of you are. Okay, did you know on the magic envelope that you can do multiple colors as well? So if you wanted to, you can do, you don't always have to do one color. And this is, this is where most people run into an issue. So let me show you. So I'm going to draw a square here. Okay, I'm going to go about 11 inches wide and just make it a little bit taller here. And then I'm going to come over in here and Corel draw and I'm going to use my envelope tool. Okay, so in my envelope tool here, what I'm going to do is I want to actually make this a little bit different and I want to make it kind of do that envelope. So watch, if I go here and I click on my single arc and add new, I can grab that and move it there. I can grab this and move it here. You can do whatever you want. If I hold shift, it moves them both in. If I hold control, it moves them both up and both down. Okay, everybody see what I'm doing here? So what I can also do is I could grab this one and hit add new. And this is basically allowing me to form it to anything I want with any of the nodes. So you can get as crazy as you want with all of this stuff to create envelopes. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to do here. So our sting part of the design right here See how they wanted baseball underneath? Again, they wanted, it used to say Sarasota, Sting, and baseball, okay? But they wanted to get the Sarasota out of it. But what we didn't want to do, and I'll show you, is what we didn't want to do is this. I'm going to type out baseball here. So this doesn't look very good to have baseball sting. We want it to be, obviously, sting baseball sounds a lot better and it's gonna look a lot better. So here's the issue I ran into when creating this design is I needed to figure out how to get this to look good, but see how I created it with this design here? Can you see a difference between, what's the difference that you see right away between this sting design that they gave me and this one here? Can you see the difference? Anybody see the difference? There's a big difference. And, and don't pay attention to the envelope on it yet. Correct. Joe's got it. Ann's got it. A few of you got it already. It's the placement of the S. Okay. See what I did? I moved the S around. So basically the S here is down below here. Okay. And I had to do that because I wanted that open area to where we put the Sarasota before, I wanted that to be a baseball on this one, okay? So that's what obviously made it a lot different. So to do something like that, and I figured that out after I recreated it. So to do something like that, I'll grab the this part of my design here, and then what I'll do is a few different ways I can do it. One way I can do it is I can go up here and I can click break apart, and what that did is it broke each of the letters apart, okay? So now they're all individual. I can grab my S and let's move it down like that, okay? So all I did is I grabbed my S. Now to make sure that it all lines up perfect, I can just grab one of my grid lines down just to make sure everything's lining up great. Does everybody know how to make sure that, a, that an object locks to the grid line? And those of you who don't know, to get these, basically, it's basically kind of like a ruler that you're bringing down there or, or a leveler. So you can just left click on this ruler area right here and drag it down and drop it. And that's going to form a grid line and then click on it to delete it. You can do the same thing on the side as well. So you could grab multiple grid lines on the side like this. And it's going to help you when you're aligning your designs. Very, very cool tool that I use a ton. 
Now, for example, see how I was moving it real slow to try and get it perfect? If you want to make sure that whatever you're working with locks to that grid line, all you need to do is go to View, Snap To, and then Snap to Grid Lines. So View, Snap To, Snap to Grid Lines. Now watch, when I move it a little bit, see how it's just locking right into that? So again, it's making it a lot easier to get it to that grid line. So it's just locking right on that. And then I know that everything's perfect as soon as I let go. All right, everybody see that now? Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to highlight my design. I would say that looks pretty good there. I'm going to duplicate it and weld it together. So now I have my sting again now, okay? And let's go ahead and create those offsets again. So I got a, what do we do? A 0.1 island fill and then a 0.12 island fill. And now we have this look of the design. So basically very, very similar. I can edit my nodes again. And this is where you're always going to have different things like this. You're going to have things where you're going to start to create a design and you're going to say, oh, man, it would look a lot better this way. Or it would look a lot better like this. And that's where I did that with this design As I said, man, I bet you it would look a lot better if we made the S extend out towards the bottom. And then we'll be able to put that baseball along there. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to create a envelope for this. So to create an envelope for this, I can grab my rectangle tool here. So I have my rectangle. I got my envelope. I'm going to add new and we can do a lot of different types of things with our envelope tool and whether we're putting a, a text in it or anything else. So you'll see this is unconstrained so you can do whatever you want. This one right here is a straight line. So I'll show you what a straight line does. I'll just run through each of them. I did straight line and add new. I moved this up. It's basically going to form it at a straight line. See that? If I went to this one here, so single arc, add new. I drag that up and it's going to look like this. Or I could drag this up and it's going to look like that. So again, a lot of different things we can do with this single arc. So you can see this is kind of what I did on this design is something like this. See how it's going up to that area right there and forming right along. Everybody see that? So again, that's where the sting is going to go. So watch what we can do here now. Now that we have this, let's get in. Yes, I'm getting a lot of questions. Are we recording this? Because there's no way I'm going to remember it. Yes, we are recording this. So we will post this on the uh, channel for you guys to see as well. Okay. So now that I have an envelope like this, and it doesn't need to be the exact same, but I like to come over here with my Smart Fill tool and just click on the Smart Fill. So that just filled that in, and I'll get rid of this original one. So this is what we call our magic envelope, okay? The Smart Fill tool is what I clicked on down here, all right? So this is what we call our magic envelope. So watch what we can do with this. Here's what a lot of you probably get. You'll click on the magic envelope, you'll shift click to the orange and you'll come over here and right click on magic envelope and you'll get this right here. See how it formed it perfect? But what happened? What, what did we want to happen? We wanted all three of those colors to come over into that magic envelope. Does anybody know how to fix that? If we want all three colors to go into a magic envelope, and I think I've shown this on a few webinars, but I know a lot of you still we get that question a lot okay now a couple different things here a few of you are saying group a few of you are saying magic place a few of you are saying weld okay that's great great so what we can do here yes Kim we will put the date on the webinar as well for the recorded version so here's what's gonna if I click on this and hit weld this is gonna happen it's gonna weld it all together so it's gonna turn it all into one color all I need to do is highlight it and group it. So it's all grouped together. Click on my magic envelope, shift click to the sting. And then I'm going to come over to my magic envelope and right click. And there you go. 
So see how it pulled over all three colors that time? So all you need to do is group it together. Now it's going to be grouped together here as well, but if you hit ungroup, now you have all three of your cuts. And what if I were putting this on a white shirt, would I cut out all three of the colors? I know you guys know the answer to this one. Am I going to cut out three colors here if I'm putting it on a white shirt? No, no, you better not be. Awesome. So what would I do here? If I wanted to put this onto a white shirt, what am I going to do? I'm going to trim it out. Yep. Yep, you guys got it, orange and black. So a lot of you are saying take the white and shift click on the black and trim it out. And I'll show you what that's going to do. Let me change this to a different color just so we can see it better. Yellow, shift click on the black and I'll trim. And that trimmed it out. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. Then you have to delete the yellow. But like some of you are saying, and Melissa just posted it as well, is an even easier way is go yellow, shift click to the black, and then go back minus front. And then you don't even have to delete the yellow. So it's saving you an extra step. So now when you put this onto a white shirt, obviously the white is going to be showing through there. You're going to use two colors of your heat transfer vinyl, and it's going to have a three color look on the design. All right. So does anybody know, and I know this is a little bit of a weird question, but anybody know how I can make this design look a little bit better? And I'm now I'm very picky. OK, if you look at this design, what looks does anything look a little bit weird to you about it? And be picky because your customers will be picky as well. So what I noticed when I created, and I see some of you are saying it, is see the black part here? It looks like it's kind of going at a little bit of an angle. This is kind of going at an angle down. Well, it's doing what it's supposed to do because we did that envelope. We did the magic envelope, and I see most of you are saying that. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go back a few steps get back to our envelope and I'm going to paste that so we can save that one for later. So here's what I did to fix that. I took this part here, okay? And I went boom to my sting part of the design. So let me go ahead and group this part together. So let's go ahead and weld this. So this is just my initial inside area, okay? So watch what I'll do. Boom, shift click magic envelope. So now it's got this part of the sting. Okay. Now what I'm going to actually do is come up and I'm going to basically kind of work in reverse. So now that I have this part created, I can come in here and say, okay, 0.1 island fill to the outside and 0.12 island fill to the outside. Come over to here, click on my black, highlight my design get rid of my outline and you can see the difference and I can make the black area thicker if I want but see the difference there see how it doesn't look like that's going at an angle there the outlines are completely perfect and remember I showed you cleaning up the little nodes right there double click highlight delete highlight delete any area down here we knew there was a little spot there delete that and the little spot there delete that okay so which one of these two do you think look nicer? I prefer the bottom one here because I like everything to kind of be symmetrical and proportionate with, uh, with the spacing between it and everything else. Does this still look cool? Yeah, it still looks nice, but I don't really like how the black is going at an angle there that looks a little bit weird. So these are the things that they're, they're tiny little things in CorelDRAW, but a lot of different things that as you're working on designs, and believe me, when I created this design, I created it last week. When I made this shirt, I made it this way off the start, and I pressed it and everything. And after I pressed it, I looked at it, I was, and as I was lining it up, I was like, man, that looks kind of weird to me. And then I was just started thinking, I was like, okay, well, how could I fix that? How can I make that? So I figured, okay, well, if I work reverse and do my magic envelope with just the orange, 
that will make the orange form a straight line across the top because it'll follow that magic envelope. And then that's going to obviously, when I create those contours around the outside, make those a lot more proportionate and make those look a lot cleaner as well. So there are going to be, and the funniest part about it is, what do you think I did? I pressed two of the shirts like this. And it was a full design. I pressed the entire design. And what I did is I actually used the magic vinyl remover and I removed the entire design off the shirt and then I repressed it the right way. So it saved me an entire shirt because that was annoying me the way that was. But what I do like about this one is how the black is a little bit thicker there. It just kind of stands out a little bit more, which again, on this design, you can, if you wanted to, say, okay, I want it to be 0.5 island fill black and see how I just made it thicker in a matter of seconds. So highlight it, get rid of my blue outline there, and now it looks a lot nicer, okay? So everybody kind of see what I did there and how we got to this point with it? Um, and that's a great question. Speaking of vinyl remover, um, if you leave the vinyl remover, the vinyl remover, when it sits for a long, long time, it can start to evaporate. So what I like to do is just poke a, you'll see with the spout on the top, just poke a little hole to be able to get through. But then when I'm not using it, I will put like a little cloth or something in there and then screw the top back on. And that's going to help with that issue, Ann. Okay, so now that we have this, we have this sting part of the design. Obviously, we need to get baseball underneath this area. So let me clean up these nodes here. And clean up these nodes here. Clean up a couple on the top there. And a couple on top there. A couple on the top there. And we're good to go. So we got Sting here, we got it going up across the area to, to the top there, and we have that little area as far as where we want to fit baseball. And a lot of you are asking, right up here at the top, Race 1 Earth's End is the font that we were using for this. Because it's not the font that they had used originally, because you can see the S's are completely different. But what I wanted to do is somewhat match the area here with the, just because I saw that the A kind of had points in it, the E kind of has a point in it, it somewhat matches the actual font for the sting. Um, Charles, yes, we do have the vinyl remover on the website. It'll be under the um, accessories. Okay, so how do I get the baseball to form right along with this sting? Who's got it for me? Uh, the vinyl remover should work on most of the heat transfer vinyl out there. I haven't found many that it doesn't. Okay, so I have a couple of you saying magic envelope. I have a couple of you saying fit to path. I like the way the fit to path works better with this design. So what I would do is if I did a fit to path is I would come over here. You could grab your three-point curve tool if you want. Grab it to here. Come over to that spot there and let go. And then just form it right across the top there. So see how that just basically formed a path for me. Now what I'm going to do is I have my baseball. I'm going to come up here in the wizard and I'm going to hit fit text to path. And what happened? Anybody know why it did that? This used to annoy me when I didn't know how to fix it. How many of you out there will create a path and try and fit your text to the path and it'll be upside down and reverse? pretty annoying yeah Guillermo it used to piss me off too and then what would you always do you would click on it then you would come over here and you would try and mirror it and then you would try and flip it around and then you would try to move it every which way Laverne you got it the difference is is it's the way that I drew the line did you see how I started on this side and I drew it to this side that's which way you drew it so that's which way it's going to put the text had I started the line on the left side and drew it to the right side, then it would have done it the right way.
Now what I can also do is check this out. If I double click on that path right there, I just double clicked, you can come up here and see it says reverse direction. So watch this. See the way, the way that you can always tell, and a lot of people don't know this, see that arrow? See what way the arrow is pointing? Come over here, see what way that arrow is pointing? That's telling you, and I know a lot of you, I never did, a lot of you never really pay attention to what those mean. That means that the path is going that way. So watch, if I, boom, reverse path, see the arrows now? They're pointing the opposite way. So you don't even have to go back and redraw the path. And then when you come here and fit text to path, boom, check that out. How easy was that fix? So all you need to do is reverse the path. You can always tell what way the path is going by looking at the arrows. Reverse the path, and that's going to fix that issue. Ah, I bet you that I bet you that was new for some of you. And you guys know my goal at every webinar is to learn at least one thing. Now what I'm doing is I'm just editing my text spacing. So I went to the left here. I said, okay, I want that to arrange over to the right a little bit more. I'm just going to hold the right arrow, and that's adding some spacing to it. So that looks good there. I'm good to go. Let's come up here, and I can go object, break text apart, and I can get rid of my path. And there we go, Sting Baseball. Pretty simple to do, right? And then what I did for them, again, because we want to customize things, okay? So I have my baseball here. I wanted the front of the shirt to have a custom number on it. A lot of You'll see a lot of different baseball uniforms and football uniforms that will do this. So I basically, with that same Race 1 Wave 85 font, and I think this is on defont.com, I just threw a little custom number 20 there. So basically, when this design were on the shirt, it would look kind of like this. So let me just shrink it down to size here, throw it on the front of the shirt, and that's what you will get with it. And then I think what we did with the shirts actually is we went white, and then this, we went boom, back minus front, and that's the orange shirt showing through. Okay, uh, info on the shirt. This is a Badger shirt, B-A-D-G-E-R, Badger shirt awesome camo shirts we did their uniforms in black and orange okay so everybody everybody here knows how to if you're working on a shirt like this get it into the wizard for the custom mock-ups everybody knows how to do that right yeah it is a dry fit shirt and then another cool thing i did with this right here is check this out what we did for the team, we just went out to Sports Authority or a place and grabbed some Under Armour pants. Just went and purchased some Under Armour pants. And watch what I can do here. I can take this and I'll pull it off to the side here to show you. So, got this off to the side. I'm going to change this to an orange. I'm going to change this to a white. I'm going to get rid of the baseball. And I'm going to grab my number 20 and make that white. And I'll do it gray for now just so you guys can see it. Take this 20 right here, enlarge it a little bit. And this is pretty cool. They loved this part of it. And let's change those back to a white real quick. We already have the design created. Why not use it? And I did this. Boom. Shrink that down. And now on all of their pants, they had the Sting logo with a custom number 20 on it. So, again, something that completely customized this for them. Very small. I think it was like three and a half inches wide to do something like this. And then the uniform's completely customized for them. And then these pants, eventually, we're going to get stuff like this into the wizard. But, again, you can add all this stuff in yourself. But if you really wanted to, you could technically put it on like this and almost make it look like it's a full uniform type thing. So you can do different things like that that make it, we do it a lot with the shorts and stuff like that to where it looks like a full outfit to be able to show them. So I see a lot of you are asking, 
because I mentioned it. So if I mentioned it, I'm going to have to show you quick. A lot of you are asking how to get the shirts into the wizard. Okay, I'll show you how to do it. Everybody want to see it real quick? Those of you who don't know, it's a good refresher. So show you how to get it. That's that's our main goal with the wizard is to make it the most customizable and easy workflow for all of you for any software out there. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab these two shirts and I've already done it, but I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it over to here. And how does it hold up on the pants? Uh, Brandy, it holds up perfect. And those of you who have been to some of our shows, we did that same logo on the shoes as well. We do it on the uh, batting gloves. We do it on everything. We customize everything they wear. Shoes, batting gloves, helmets, arm sleeves, whatever you want. Okay. So first thing I did with these, and you can see, is, and I, I'm not going to run through that. We have a bunch of videos out. I did a beast blind tool. So basically, I got this shirt, and I did a beast blind tool of it to make it look like this. And I did the... Um, the trim tool or the um, simplify. So once you're in there and you go to object, shaping, and intersect, I'm sorry, I said simplify. I did the intersect tool to be able to get just the shirt where it doesn't have like the white background around it. And I'll show you how easy this is to add on. So I'm going to go to my mockups and I'm going to go to a custom mockup. And let's say, for example, I want to get rid of. We can get rid of one of these. Let's get rid of this um, this tank top or this um, hooded sweatshirt right here. So I want this one to go there. I'm going to click on the shirt. I'm going to right click here, and that's going to drop it there. Okay. So I just right clicked. Now this is just your image. To this is basically to remind you what that button is. It's that orange uniform. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift and left click, and what that's going to do is it's going to pull up. The other two, this was that hoodie that was in there. So we're going to delete the hoodie and delete the hoodie. You can see it pulled up two brand new pages for me. Come back over here. I'm going to copy my front design. You can see custom six front. And I'm going to paste my front design in there. Send it to the back. I can see that red area right there. Okay. So that red area, I'm going to select it. In my mockups, I'm going to shift and right click and now it says please enter size well you're telling it what size this red box is okay so let's say it's uh, 12 inches wide and that'll keep your designs proportionate on your shirt so 12 inches wide and I'm gonna hit OK highlight the design file and save so now my front design is saved I can close that out now we have our back design click on the back copy Custom 6, paste, edit, send that to back. Our back design, we want to make it a little bit taller because we're going to have a custom number that goes in there as well. Move up, move it up here near the top. And again, in our mock-up, shift and right click because I have that selected. Let's say this is 13 inches wide from left to right. OK, highlight my design, file and save. Never change the name of the actual file though or that will mess it up, okay? That always has to stay the same. Close that out. Now we have these. Let's go back and those are in there. They're in the wizard now. They're never going away until you make them go away, okay? And I'll show you what happens now. Check this out. Got my Sting Baseball. I'm going to group that part together. I'm going to group this part together. Let's make sure our sizing is right. I'm going to make this about 11 inches. And this right here, I'm going to make about 11.5. So that's grouped. This is grouped. Highlight what I want to go on the front of the shirt. I'm going to click TRW logo. I'm going to add my logo. Um, background color of the product. It black is fine. Background color of the design. We want to make the same color as the shirt. So we'll make that probably an orange and hit OK. And then here, I'm going to do a, let's do a proof front and back, okay? This is what we just added in there, okay? So when I click on that actual shirt, it's going to run through it, and bam, there you go. 
front design perfectly placed, back design perfectly placed, and a big image of both of your designs as well, showing them the exact size of them. Pretty nice, huh? And that shirt's always going to be saved in there. So if you do embroidery, you do all different types of things, you can add any product you want into the wizard. Just like that. We did that in just a couple minutes. Okay? So those of you who are not using the custom area on the wizard, make sure to use it because it is going to add a lot of features. So even, for example, on this, can you change the uh, – you won't be able to change Joe. You won't be able to change the color of that shirt because it wasn't created to be different colors. So that's a completely different software that's used to be able to create a shirt to make different colors like we do with our original shirts, okay? <clears throat> so this design here, now we can shrink it down to, I don't know, 3.5 inches. And let me see if I still have this saved in here. Come over here, and I'm going to do a front design only, and TRW logo. Click on this right here, and I do. There you go. Boom. You got some custom shorts. So that logo you can use for anything you want, okay?